You know Amazon? They have locked a man out of his own home after falsely accusing him of being racist. Meanwhile, they're spying on children and hoarding data using their cameras and being fined $30 million for it, which they can easily afford because they've got billions of dollars of NSA government contracts. Is this good news? Is it? <coughs> <coughs> Hello there, you 6.4 million awakening wonders. Thank you for joining me on this voyage to truth and freedom as we pull various sources of information together to try to make sense of the crazy world we find ourselves living in today. This glorious day of our Lord, where Amazon have the capacity to lock someone out of their house because they think he was using racist language, even though this is a person of colour and he wasn't using racist language. And when did Amazon take control of the stuff you can say? Just deliver the stuff and maybe put on a TV series. This is getting out of control. Just do the cock rocket. Also, Amazon are spying on our children using cameras. They've received a $30 million fine, which is nothing to them, of course, because they've received billions of dollars worth of NSA contracts. Let's look at the incremental increase of Amazon power. Let's consider the world that we're drifting into, where big tech companies have the ability, the capacity to lock people out of their homes. How do you imagine this might align going forward with social credit scoring, 50-minute cities, a new centralised authoritarian, regulatory, globalist government. When you have an organisation like Amazon, which is not tethered to any nation, not tethered to any ideology except for profit, that is involved in our lives at an almost cellular level, the dispatch of products, working with the government, surveillance, there's so many areas of our lives that Amazon interface with that their power is becoming perhaps untenable. A man was locked out of his smart home devices for a week after being wrongfully accused of using a racial slur toward a delivery driver. When these kind of smart devices were introduced, do you remember what you were told? It's going to be so convenient. It's going to be so safe. There was never an inkling that you were going to be locked out of your house if you said something they didn't like. Even if they thought you said something that they didn't like, which you didn't say in the first place. Just, oh, guess what? Your fridge is going to say you've got the right ingredients to make this. Oh, the toaster's going to go, ooh, the toast is burning. Not like, hey, Sonny, I don't much care for your language. You can spend a week in the yard. Amazon confirmed that it locked Microsoft engineer Brandon Jackson out of his Echo Smart Home hardware after a delivery driver reported racist abuse coming through the smart doorbell intercom. This is an accusation based on evidence from a doorbell. It's not like a person said, hey, don't you dare call me that. It's like a doorbell said, how dare you, sir? Let's like slap it with a glove or something. We're approaching the point where one robot is going to grass up another robot for having called it a name or something. We're at the point where drivers will soon be automated. It won't be an Amazon driver anymore. That'll be done by a drone or a robot or AI. Excuse me, I don't like the way you said I look overweight. Well, you do look overweight. That's none of your goddamn business. Well, any humans affiliated with these robots, doorbells, toasters and that, you're all going to fucking prison. Who said so? Amazon does. Bing. Jackson says security camera footage revealed his Eufy doorbell had issued an automated response to the driver that said, excuse me, can I help you? He says the driver, who was wearing headphones at the time, misheard that message. Excuse me, can I help you? Say what, you little son of a bitch! Jackson regained access to his Amazon account on May 31st after what he described as an unjustified week-long lockout. You can't lock people out of their houses and their devices for a week. Where is the authority sent? Like, most of us don't trust the media anymore, right? Let me know in the comments. Most of us don't trust the government, either party anymore, right? Let me know in the comments. Don't trust big tech or social media or the deep state. So who's got the authority to go, and now by the authority invested in me by, I don't know, we're locking you out of your house? That can't be right. In an audio recording he released June 15th, Jackson added that although he supports Amazon taking steps to protect their drivers. Can you see how these things play out? Taking steps to protect their drivers. That is why that language is permeating our media discourse. Who here thinks that Amazon actually cares about racism? Have you seen their packing factories? Have you seen the amount of money they pay people? Have you seen the way that they will fight tooth and nail to prevent unions forming? While we understand unions work in some industries, they would conflict with our culture 
customer obsession, and direct working relationship. To prevent people earning a decent living. Thank God. Now that we've broken down these unions, pay these people an absolute pittance, and are destroying the environment with our every step, we can finally do something about all this goddamn racism. We don't care about racism any more than Bud Light care about gender. No one cares about anything except making money. He questioned why his entire smart home system had to be rendered unusable during their internal investigation. It's like King Midas. Like when people go, oh, he's got the Midas touch. That's good. You can turn stuff to gold. Turn these children into gold. You can't operate your fridge. You can't turn the light switch on and off. I don't like that anymore, do you? Like if you can't, oh, the telly's not working. I'm gonna have to phone someone up. Technology is obviously wonderful. I'm not an idiot. But when technology is outsourced to the degree that there is third party involved in you getting some milk out of the fridge. Oh, I think I'll have a glass of milk. I don't think you will, sonny boy. Not till you apologize for what you said yesterday to the toaster. What's the point of buying a toaster with artificial intelligence if you don't like toast? I do like toast. He added that he is reconsidering his relationship with Amazon. You shouldn't have to have a relationship with Amazon. It's meant to be utilities. We've turned commerce into a religion. We've made cathedrals of organizations that have no ideology. Branding it is a trick, you know. It's not really smiley little arrow. We're smiling and boom! giving you stuff. They don't care. It's just about making money. All of the things with the flags and whether it's BLM or LGBTQ plus stuff, I think those issues are important. I support everyone's right to be who they are, express themselves. I'll tell you who doesn't care. Amazon don't care. Microsoft don't care. None of those organizations, they can't afford to care. If caring cost them a cent, they'll stop doing it. In a statement, Amazon confirmed Jackson did not act inappropriately and said the company is looking at ways to prevent similar situations from happening again. How can we stop similar situations from happening again? I don't know, mind your own business, except that you're just meant to be a doorbell company that delivers stuff. It's none of your business. Stop pretending that you care about your drivers. Here's the thing, if you care about your drivers, how about the things that you actually control? The amount of money that you pay them, not replacing them the second, the second the technology exists. Well, we had to replace all the drivers because the doorbells were being too racist to them. These robots, they don't give a shit. Well, actually, that's not true. I'm quite a sensitive robot. Amazon shut off a man's smart home devices for a week after a delivery driver falsely accused the customer of hurling a racial slur via a doorbell intercom, the tech giant confirmed Thursday. Brandon Jackson, who is black, said he found himself digitally ex exiled by the company on May 25th, less than 24 hours after an Amazon delivery driver dropped off a package at his home and reported him for being racist. The reason there's energy behind this story is because it demonstrates how much power Amazon have. It demonstrates that we have made a bargain with these organizations. We've put ourselves in a position of vulnerability. And this, this semi-humorous story about the racist slur that wasn't because the, the homeowner was himself black and it was misheard and all of that stuff, demonstrates that in the future, well, did you take your medicine? No, I don't agree with taking medicine. Well, I'm sorry, you can't use your fridge for a month. You know, that shows you the direction we're heading in. But as long as Amazon don't have deep financial ties with the government, as long as big tech companies don't have a recent history of becoming immersed with the deep state, taking their money, doing their bidding, censoring information that's not favorable to the state, we don't have anything to worry about. These stories won't be all pervasive and this power utilized to completely control your behavior. In a statement, an Amazon spokesman person confirmed the ordeal. <laughs> this ordeal? Yeah, that's the sort of thing we've been doing, yeah. Bing! And said the company was working to prevent similar situations from happening in the future. That's actually the opposite of what's happening. The company are working to ensure that similar situations will be happening in your future, everywhere, all the time, and you will not be voting on that, let me tell you. We work hard to provide customers with a great experience, while also ensuring drivers who deliver Amazon packages feel safe. The spokesperson, Simon Griffin, said, that's actually a lie in almost every conceivable way. We work hard to provide customers with great experience. No, we don't. We work hard to make a profit and giving people a great experience. That's not the motivation. How can we give people a great experience? Oh, God, I don't know. Like, by locking them out of all of their devices and stuff? Yes. Yes, that's how we'll do it. And we're also ensuring drivers who deliver Amazon packages feel safe. Well, one way they might feel safe is if their bladders aren't bursting in their bellies. <laughs> in this case, we learned from our investigation that the customer did not act inappropriately. Also, can I just offer you this? And let me know how you feel in the comments. Maybe it ain't up to Amazon to decide what's appropriate and inappropriate. I don't remember when I was like last getting some dog meat delivered to the house going, as well as the dog meat, would you be willing to arbitrate my moral conduct as well? I don't trust myself and my private deep relationship with God and duty and honor 
Amazon. Could you handle it? You used to be run by a guy who made a cock rocket and flew his brother and himself into space. You should probably be in charge of what's right and wrong. Meanwhile, Amazon has agreed to pay more than 30 million US dollars in fines to US regulators following allegations of historical privacy abuses, including retaining data collected from children after being explicitly asked to delete it. I'm going to ask you very clearly, will you delete this information? Sorry, did you say exploit this information? No, I said delete. I'm sorry, I didn't hear that. In one case, the US Federal Trade Commission had alleged that before mid-2019, the company failed to remove voice recordings, transcriptions, and precise location data collected from children via the Alexa voice assistant, even after parents requested their removal. You know the things you actually think yourself, like, oh, this Alexa device, it won't be sort of spying on us. What? Come on, you think we'd do that? You think we would install in your home a device that would record your children and then use that? that data to make money. I don't think you know very much about Amazon at all. Have you seen Jeff Bezos' cock rocket? This guy is a genuine hero. In another case, it said the company's ring video doorbells and security cameras had unreasonable privacy practices in January 2020. According to the FTC, ring employees and contractors were given unrestricted access to view videos taken at users' homes. But we probably all know people that have gone, oh, wow, it was really good. My ring device, it showed this. I was able to see someone delivering a package or whatever. Of course it's useful. Of course it's useful. But it's behind it. There's no restrictions or regulation and Amazon are so powerful that they're going to do what they want with that. These two powerful forces, the government and global corporations are completely allied with one another. They have the same interests and they are not the same as your interests. And because of convenience, oh, it's convenient, it's convenient. It's the sort of thing I bloody do. It's easy to have an Amazon ring doorbell. It's nice to have stuff delivered straight away. We're going to have to ask ourselves some pretty searching moral questions because they're being unreasonable with that data. First of all, what you'll get is a spate of stories of these ring devices. A crime was solved because of these ring devices. A ring device showed you this amusing thing. They'll inoculate you to the fact that your privacy is being encroached upon. If you don't start recognising that you're an animal with a divine spirit that has to have certain kind of organic connections to the world and one another, you'll think that you're just here to sort of provide cartilage between Amazon, their shareholders, and the government. And you don't have any rights or value at all. Amazon's history of misleading parents. That's not good, is it? Imagine if you're on a date with Amazon. Tell us a bit about your history. Well, I mislead parents about their children. God, uh, can we get the check, please? Keeping children's recordings indefinitely and flouting parents' deletion requests violate the children's online privacy law and sacrifice privacy for profit. The director of FTC's Bureau of Consumer Protection, Samuel Levine, said in a statement, flouting parents' deletion requests, violating children's online online privacy law, sacrificing privacy for profit. That is what's happening. So do you want Amazon to have strong financial ties to a powerful legislative body? I mean, the government. An Amazon spokesperson said, like, these things are always just lies. If you notice, like, a spokesperson said it's just the person that's willing to lie for money. Right, okay, uh, are you willing to lie for money? I certainly am. You've got the job. Now, here's your next lie. Say this. At Amazon, we take our responsibilities to our customers and their families very seriously. Do you? But do you also flout their deletion requests? Yeah. And do you violate children's online privacy? Yeah. And have you sacrificed privacy for profit? Yeah. But you also take your responsibilities to customers very seriously. Yeah, those things can't all be true. Our devices and services are built to protect customers' privacy. <laughs> That's a lie. They're not. Well, it's not very good then, is it? Because it didn't. It actually violated. Now, just you get in there and be the best little doorbell you can be. I've seen that guy's dick. Well, let's have the footage and keep it forever. And to provide customers with control over their experience. While we disagree with the FTC's claims regarding both Alexa and Ring and deny violating the law, these settlements put these matters behind us. <laughs> Whee, that's where they are. Where well, they're still being filmed by another doorbell. They can just say and do what they like. You can't go through life like that. Saying stuff, denying things, putting things behind you. All your things are owned by Amazon. Things you've done, things you've said, mistakes you've made, tweets you've done. That's all a great cargo of ammunition for whenever you might decide to step out of line. Social media, powerful big tech companies like Amazon and the state are are working in rigid lockstep to prevent you having, it looks like, the thinnest shred of emotional, personal, or spiritual freedom. Last year, the National Security Agency re-awarded a once-secret cloud computing contract worth up to $10 billion to Amazon Web Services. Codenamed Wild and Stormy, <laughs> 
What's that? Don't call it that. It's not wild and stormy. It's bastard spying. The contract was first awarded to AWS in July 2021. The wild and stormy contract is part of the NSA's year-long modernization of its hybrid compute initiative, which aims to move some of NSA's crown jewel intelligence data from internal servers to those operated by a cloud service provider. In this case, AWS. NSA shouldn't have crown jewel intelligence. That's your stuff. That's your stuff. It's not like, you know all those terrorists? Oh, I thought you said you solved that. Yeah, uh, domestic terrorists, whatever. Here's all their information. They are you. There is no they. They is you. There is no separate other group that's trying to bring you down that they're protecting you from. They're the problem. How could anything be as big a threat as Amazon? What could have that much power? It would have to be China or Russia. Luckily, we've got wars with them. Anyway, AWS, the most profitable business unit within Amazon has won several major cloud computing contracts in the defense and intelligence communities dating back almost a decade. This is such a staggering story. For something that starts with a quite humorous thing of a person not being able to use their devices, it ends up being the revelation that unless we dismantle the machinery of the state, radically alter it, decentralize it, democratize it, unless we heavily regulate and break down organizations like Amazon, which in a way, they're so corrupt. It's not like, no, it's free enterprise, it's not free enterprise. They've got tax breaks, they're not paying tax properly. They're all set up and rigged in various territories. You know how this thing works. It's as big as a bloody country. It's taxed less than you are, probably pro rata. It needs to be radically altered. It didn't get where it did by gumption and moxie. There's been all sorts of breaks and funding and deals and contracts and illegal activity in collaboration with the state. And it has to stop. AWS is the biggest and most profitable unit within Amazon. Do you understand what that means? Because you, when you think of Amazon, what do you think of? The deliveries. Do you think maybe of Amazon Prime and the TV shows or whatever? That's nothing. Perhaps you think of the branding. Ding! No, the biggest part of Amazon's business is data, your data, and the deals that they do with the NSA agency. NSA is the very agency that Edward Snowden revealed is illegally stealing your data. So Amazon's money comes from, it sounds like, pretty close to crime. Your business is their business. Your privacy is their property. Your duty is to fight this with everything you have. Find some purpose. And that might, ding, put a little smile on your face. But that's just what I think. Let me know what you think in the comments and the chat. If you enjoyed this video, have a look at either of these. Turn on the notification bell and subscribe. If you want to have a laugh about the last few years, my comedy special, Brandemic, is available. It's uncensored. It's self-funded. It's on my there's a link in the description. More important than any of that is that you please stay free.